Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live Season 3. Tonight is the first episode in Season 3. We're going to do 10 more episodes here live on YouTube each week on Wednesday evening. And like always, I am joined by my good friend and fellow artist who's also a teacher, Ashley Hurst. Ashley, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Matt. Thanks for asking, and I'm glad to be back with you guys. I, I'll be honest, I've been looking forward to this all day. I've really been looking forward to it for a couple of weeks, but definitely today. And Ashley's over there in the dark, and before we were <laughs> going to go live, we were frantically getting everything together, and I said, I'm going to, you, you look dark compared to me, um, and I was going to fix that, and I didn't fix that, and now I see that you're a little bit darker. You're a little bit in the dark, but that's okay. That's Maybe. okay. I've been in the dark all my life. I'll figure out what's going on by the end of the show, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> if you're brand new to Getting Sketchy, uh, what it is is myself or Ashley, we try to create a drawing from start to finish inside of 45 minutes here, live for you to enjoy and watch here on YouTube. And if you are watching this live, of course, there is a chat box that's, that is flying by, and Ashley's made in the chat box tonight because it's on me to create the drawing. And tonight we're going to be working with charcoal. We're going to be doing an image of a skull and before you guys get after me for doing a skull and saying, oh, that means death and all that stuff, that's no, no. not what it means at all. Uh, that's a part of the human figure, and uh, it's a wonderful, challenging, beautiful object to draw. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be working on toned paper, and I'm going to be using a variety of different forms of charcoal, including white charcoal and then the traditional forms of charcoal, vine and compressed charcoal. Uh, to complete the drawing inside of 45 minutes. If you are new to this channel, I would encourage you to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Of course, uh, we have a broad variety of drawing and painting uh, lessons on this site, covering a broad, broad variety of media and subject matter, of course. And we also have a wonderful membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses, which include videos and eBooks, weekly live lessons, which after we broadcast here on YouTube, we're going to head over to the virtualinstructor.com. We're going to continue the live lesson series that we're doing right now. We're working with watercolor pencils and the live lesson series, uh, which are part of the membership program are, are clearly more in depth. They're longer. Um, what we're doing here on getting sketchy is loose and fun. And uh, not to say that a lot of lessons aren't fun, they're fun too, but uh, this is just meant to be quick and fun. So uh, anyway, I think that's all I need to say. Ashley, do you need to add anything to that? Are you going to show our audience today what you've been working on on, the, on your live lesson? Um, that's a good question. I had planned on doing that, but it is far behind me there in the studio. And uh, if Well, <laughs> I got to tell you, it looks great. It's been a really good series so far. And so... Um, if you haven't gotten to see the first couple of um, the first couple of lessons, um, maybe and you haven't joined the virtual instructor, you, instructor, you, know, you should do so, and you can still catch up because Matt probably still has maybe two more lessons to go. Yeah, two or three. We'll see okay. where we are at the end of tonight's uh, lesson. But you also have access to all the live lessons we've ever done, and I've been broadcasting live since 2012. So that's a lot of content oh, wow. on top of all of the courses. And there's a lot over there to explore. There's a trial. There's a, a free trial for a week. There's a link in the description below if you want to check that out. And if you want to check out three of our course videos and eBooks for free, there's also a link in the description below this video. But check that stuff out later. Yeah, because, let's check out the skull. Yeah, because tonight we're we're gonna we're gonna draw. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, switch over to the main camera and get into this one. All right, well, we don't need the timer yet. Um, I'm going to use every bit of the time that I have here. Um, the paper that I'm working on tonight is actually toned uh, gray charcoal paper, and charcoal paper has like a laid pattern associated with it, so there's a good amount of tooth or texture to, to hold the charcoal in place. It's a little bit better to work on than regular drawing paper. If you've ever used charcoal before, you know it's kind of powdery and messy, and uh, the charcoal paper mm -hmm. helps to hold it in place. And one of the advantages to working on toned paper, of course, is we start with a middle value, and uh, values the darkness or lightness of a color, if you don't know. So we're starting somewhere in the middle of the value scale, and that's going to allow us to add both darks to push the values darker and lights to push the values lighter. So we actually start with the middle, so it's easier to create a full range of value and tone in the image, 
uh, other than working on black paper or white paper where you start on one end of the value scale. So it's definitely advantageous to work on gray paper. And again, advantageous too, since we're working with charcoal, and we're working on charcoal paper. Of course, you can use a variety of different mediums on the surface, don't just have to be charcoal. Charcoal paper is considerably thinner than other drawing papers, so you're not gonna be splashing watercolor around on the surface and get away with it. Mm -hmm. um, but this paper is really great for working with charcoal, obviously. Now, if, uh, if, if we're following along at home, we could still work on white paper and have a good experience. We don't necessarily need gray paper to be successful. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but the issue you might run into is I'm going to be using white charcoal for the highlights and some of the uh, lighter values. And uh, that's going to be a little bit harder to see when you apply white material to a white paper, of course. Uh, in fact, if you are working on white paper, I would suggest, you know, maybe just leaving the white charcoal out completely and allowing the white of the paper to do the work for you for your lighter tones and values. Uh, real quickly here, because I want to get into the drawing process, I have a variety of different forms of charcoal out in front of me. This is vine charcoal. That's V-I-N-E charcoal. This is the softer form of charcoal. It's very easy to erase. And um, it's really good for some of those middle values. You can push it to some of the darker values, but it's really great for initial sketching too because it lifts and erases so easily from the surface. Um, most of the time you're gonna find vine charcoal and sticks like this. And then I also have a couple of forms of compressed charcoal. These are both charcoal pencils. I'll probably be using this pencil here just because I like the fact that you can, uh, you know, you can sharpen it by just pulling the paper down. It's quick and easy and it'll keep me moving pretty quickly throughout the process. The only thing about these, uh, this type of pencil is sometimes the charcoal can break on the inside of the encasement and uh, then it can give you some troubles. I've got a couple of other forms of charcoal pencil here too. I don't know if I'll use this, uh, the general's pencil or not. Compressed charcoal also comes with sticks. Usually you'll know the difference between vine and compressed charcoal because the vine charcoal is round. The compressed charcoal is usually a square uh, what would you call that, a rectangular prism? Yeah, that's ex exactly right, actually. Okay. <laughs> um, so, and then I have uh, some white charcoal. Now, there's no such thing as white charcoal. Well, there is white charcoal, but it actually is gray, and it's pretty rare. Um, so this, this material is called white charcoal, as you can see, or they've reversed it, charcoal white, but it's really not charcoal there's been some kind of pigment added to it's it or a something. dry powdery medium yeah it acts it's like charcoal yeah it's really really probably more similar to um conte or um pastel although it's not as powdery as pastel but it works mm -hmm. great with charcoal and you know the name white charcoal hey we'll, we'll just call it white charcoal because that's what the manufacturer it's kind of like it. white chocolate we just have to accept it <laughs> <laughs> um, so white charcoal also comes in compressed sticks too. This is a stick of white charcoal. I doubt I'll use the stick. I usually use the pencil, but I have it there for um, your, your viewing pleasure. And I also have a few blending stumps. I'm not sure how much I'll use these, but uh, I have them at the ready as well. I'm probably going to be making mostly deliberate marks, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit of blending and smearing with my fingers. And I have a kneaded eraser for cleaning and tidying things up and also keeping my fingers clean. Uh, when, I, when I smear or smudge with my finger, I can take the kneaded eraser and basically clean my fingers uh, by just you know, moving, kneading the eraser around here. Usually people don't talk about keeping their hands clean when they're drawing with charcoal, so I'm looking forward to seeing how Matt does that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, I like to keep my, my hands clean, as uh, some of you know that, uh, that I'm a very clean person. Uh, anyway, I think we're ready to get into. I think we're ready the to start. Drawing There's part. a couple questions so, out there. So all right, we well, can, let's hit a couple questions. Yeah, while you real get quick, started, and, and actually, um, you know, some of our guests have have been answering the question. It's great, and I would remind you guys if you do have a question for for Matt or myself, and you put it in all caps, I'll definitely see it. If it's not in all caps, I'm still going to try to see it for sure. And of course, if you just want to talk with uh, with uh, other guests, then definitely um, don't put it in caps. But the cool kid out there asks, is charcoal easy to draw with and we've got some answers um margaret tells us that with matt's instruction it was fun uh, michelle tells us that it is easy to draw with and i would say that it is forgiving more forgiving maybe than well definitely more forgiving than ink and even than a pencil particularly the vine charcoal that matt referenced because you, it almost just wipes or dusts away now it is very strong it's high contrast so it can be difficult 
um, to put light marks down. But don't worry about that. It erases easily enough. So you may just have to work your way back to the lighter values with your eraser. So is it is it easy to draw with charcoal? It's not any harder than another drawing medium. I, I would say that. Yeah, and it depends on what your definition of easy is. Some people are going to think that using a pencil is easier um, just because they're comfortable with that. You know, we learn to write mm -hmm. with pencil or pen. Right. So when you get a stick out, you know, you can't hold a stick like this. You can, but you're going to. It's not, not going to be at its optimal <laughs> optimal mark-making position. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're when you're drawing with a stick, of course, you're, you're holding it differently. You're holding it kind of more like a paintbrush. Um, and for some people, that's going to be a little bit awkward because they're not used to it. But charcoal, like Ashley said, is very, very forgiving. It's more similar to painting, actually. Uh, it is a drawing form, obviously, but it is very closely related to painting. Um, and yeah. with that, I think you can go ahead with the questions, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and start the okay. timer and yeah. start working here. Oh yeah. We got to uh, start so we'll the timer. 45 minutes on the clock. And I'm going to do my very best here with the 45 minutes. And I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do here at the beginning. And then I'll actually get back to the questions. The first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to try to capture a little bit of a diagonal that happens here. So I'm thinking from the top of the skull down the front of the skull down to the bottom. Okay. So this is going to help me get the entire skull on the picture plane, first of all. So I'm not gonna get up here and say, oh my gosh, I haven't got the head. And it'll also help me get that sl that slight slant or diagonal that's happening there across the front plane of the head there too. And then from here, let's say this is the pinnacle of the skull. I'm gonna draw a couple of angled lines for the front side here. I like how you're starting out with straight lines. That looks and great. And an angled line. Yeah, it's just... I'm thinking about, I'm trying to simplify the curved lines yeah, into exactly. straight lines uh, just so I can stay loose here. And then the back of the head here, and I'm, I'm going to do my best with the anatomy, uh, but I am, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good with the anatomy, um, even though I... Oh, don't sell yourself I short. Almost. I, I'm not. It's looking good. Looking good so far to well, me. Well, I mean, I, I can draw, but... I, <laughs> oh, you mean tell the, you what, the language. Tell you what the parts are. Oh, yeah. 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 No, you, we'll if you're not using the, the, the Latin lobe, term, right? We need Latin terms which is, tonight. Which is the only thing I know, the <laughs> occipital lobe. Uh, and what's funny is, you know, I loved anatomy in high school. I, in fact, my senior year, I took anatomy in AP biology, um, in the same year, because I thought I might want to go into uh, the medical profession, believe it or not. In fact, I, th I thought I wanted to be a medical illustrator until I found out you had to, you know, draw cadavers. And, and it's <laughs> like, no thanks, I'm out. <laughs> um, so this line I drew across the top, that's basically the, the bridge across the top of the uh, two occipital lobes um, there. The brow. The brow the, line, yeah. That's, I know that's layman's terms there. We'll call it the brow bone. Yeah. I, see, I don't even know what the brow is called. Um, <laughs> and then from here, I'm just looking at relationships. I, I can see how much space there is from that first lobe to where we see the opening for the nose, which I guess is the nasal cavity. Yeah, is that what I'll is? just mention that Brent Does Art tells us that generals won't actually say what they m used to make their white charcoal. It's apparently a trade secret. Oh, it's a secret. Wow. Now now I have to know. It's going to become an obsession. I'm sure it's not Conte. Mm. <laughs> but you know what? There's got to be a reason why they're not telling people. that. You know, there's got to be a reason. Why don't they just mm -hmm. say, oh, it's well, It's probably we do this. a common household product you have in, under your kitchen sink, and they don't want you to know. Well, I think it's probably it's another Ajax, medium. It's Ajax, smashed together really tightly. It's an Ajax. Um, I think it's just another medium and they're, you know, like Conte or something. Mm -hmm. and they're, they're calling it white charcoal because... Because what, maybe they can charge yeah, a little more. I don't know. Yeah, Who knows? Yeah. Well, um, let's see. Alana has a great comment. I love painting, but I'm so scared of drawing. I never hear that. I always hear it the other way around. So that's interesting to me. I love painting, but I'm so scared of drawing. I like watching you draw um, because it makes me feel like Maybe, just maybe I can do it. Well, if you can paint, I believe you can I believe you can draw too. You've actually already jumped in with both feet because painting really is drawing in in, uh, in a lot of ways. It's drawing plus. Yeah, painting and drawing, I think are that you, your mind is working the same way. 
in, in both mediums. Well, I mean, your process might not be the same, but the things you should be thinking about and considering are the same things. And uh, no surprise, it's the elements of art. Uh, you should be thinking mm -hmm. about shape, value, form, texture. Uh, if you're working with color, color, of course. So, you know, it, that doesn't change whether you're working with, uh, with a pencil or you're working with a paintbrush. All right, great. And that's something a lot, I hear a lot of people say that, uh, you, you know, especially, um, I hear a lot of people say, I just want to, I just want to watercolor paint. That's all I want to do. I'm just saying this as an example. Mm -hmm. um, and they clearly don't want to draw because they're maybe afraid of drawing or something like that. I'm not really sure why that's the case, but if you do want to be great at painting, you do have to have, in my opinion, some level of drawing skill, too. Um, and it is a skill. It's something that's going to develop, and when you get good at it, you're going to continue to get even better and better at it, you know, all, all through, uh, through practice over the course of your life. Now, we had mentioned that uh, charcoal is very loose and forgiving. So you can see all the marks I'm making here as I'm trying to find the skull on the paper. I'm not getting too tight because a lot of this can be lifted up. I am kind of concerned about the time, though, so I am working quickly partly because of that, but also because this is when charcoal is at its best. Denise tells us that the occipital lobe is in the back of the head. Not occipital, not occipable. Not the occipital lobe. Uh, what did I say? I don't, I, I felt like you said occipital lobe. Okay, well, maybe I did. I oh. meant orbital lobe. Is that oh, what it is? Oh, the orbital lobe. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> now, that little bump that's behind the jaw below where the ear would be, is that the xiphoid process? No, the xiphoid process is at the bottom oh of your sternum. I'm so glad this is an art show. <laughs> But it and, really uh, isn't, and, I, and I'll tell you why I know well, where the xiphoid process is, because that is, if you break the xiphoid process off, then it will float along around in your coelom, and it could actually puncture your lung or other <laughs> uh, important organ in okay. your in your uh, coelom. Okay, if it breaks off. Yeah, then what, who was that, uh, who was that dude, John Claude Van Damme? Yeah. Who would, you know, hit people in the chest? And they would die. Mm, you're thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking of, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'm thinking of blood sport. Yeah, blood sport. Yeah, he, I, mm. I assume that he was hitting Famous people French in their martial zypho artist. xiphoid process. So it wasn't really a, a um, secret guarded by Shaolin monks. It was just something you can learn in an anatomy class. Yeah. Aim for the xiphoid yeah, process. Of I got it. Joe, go for the xiphoid process. Okay, now... Um, since I've kind of got a loose structure of the skull in place, you know, the back of the head kind of fades off into the shadow. I'm going to go ahead and just block in some of these shadowed areas real mm -hmm. quick with the vine charcoal and maybe smear a little bit and then move on from there here. You know, um, Alana told us that she's not, in, not as uh, keen on drawing but has another, another great comment. Uh, let's see. Oh, I think I've lost it. Oh, here it is. Drawing freehand, my proportions are always a bit off, but I like that you start um, not with the contour lines, but with the basic shapes. And, you know, I think that's the real key to solving some of those proportion problems. If you could just see the see a basic shape and, con, you know, and compare its height to its width and add the next basic shape and compare its height to its width, it's going to go a long way in uh, getting, you, getting you a good start on the proportions of your drawing. And then, of course, being willing to relentlessly change your mistakes. If you've, if you've made a drawing and you recognize that your proportions are a bit off, then you're, you're halfway there. You already know, what, you already know that there's a, um, a mistake, and you just kind of stick with it and move those basic shapes around left and right, up and down, little bits at a time until, until your drawing falls more in line with your observation. Okay, so how's that for being loose right there? Yes, this is, I don't know who this person is in the studio right now. Well, it's the medium. You know, <laughs> there are some mediums that force me to be looser. That's right. And charcoal is, is one of those that does that. Okay, so now I'm going to take the kneaded eraser and actually clean up a few of these lines here. I'm not going to get real fussy with this. I'm just going to erase a few areas here and there. 
And then we'll go ahead and start working with the white charcoal a little bit. Let's see what. Oh, we got plenty of time here. Let's, We've got kind of a theme in the chat box. Sniper Wipers from the UK um, says that he's been drawing as long as he's been, has held a pencil, as long as he's been able to hold a pencil. He's bought a lot of tubes of oil paint, but never really done anything or, or much with them, maybe. And uh, would you say that drawing or painting is easier? Um, I would say that drawing in black and white is easier only because there's less to consider. And that now all I mean by that is that you're you're focused on value and less on color and color theory and color relationships and how color can alter the perceived um but you're forgetting proportion. there are you're forgetting there are colored mediums oh, no, for no, drawing. No. I hadn't forgotten. I just haven't oh, gotten no. to that yet. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, now you know, colored pencil is uh, kind of present kind of flies in the face of that. Uh, of my comment. And pastel. For Some sure. pastel artists call their pastel drawings paintings, in oh, yeah. fact. So that's that's yeah. the that's sort of the weird one. Um whether it's a painting or drawing. But so maybe pastel would be a good place to go. Uh, because it is kind of thought of between drawing and painting. And if you feel pretty comfortable with your drawing, then I would and and you know, I don't know your history. You you may have a huge a huge closet of pastels that you use regularly. But uh if you're if you're wanting to make the jump, but from drawing to more painting, I think that uh, pastel is a comfortable way to do that. Yeah, I agree. I think that that's a good transition medium. And one thing that I just want to point out, uh, it, when you're talking about the theme here. I think the the theme might be that you're referring to is people are looking for easy things to do. Is that what you're? <laughs> well, no, no. Just kind of comparing or considering what's harder or more difficult, painting versus drawing, because Alana felt like she prefers to paint and that drawing is harder. And then um, and then the next comment, well, uh, let's see. Sniper wipers, I didn't want to get that backwards. I remembered it was a compound word. Sniper wipers uh, kind of had the kind of had the opposite impression. We're all we're all different artists with different inclinations. That's okay. Brent Brent does art mentions that looks like Supreme Leader Snoke. From Star Wars, a little bit, a little bit. Maybe it's his skull. Yeah, yeah, it does kind of look like. like he sort of looks dead. like a skull, you know, like he's somewhere between like a fleshy person and not so much. I want to get rid of some of these outlines, some of these contours, mm -hmm. a little bit. And you can see I've just gone back with the needed eraser and just. Quickly lift up, lift lifted up <laughs> some of the uh, charcoal there, and it's making lighter values. But uh, remember, we're still just middle value and darker at this point. Mm, right, There's right. no lighter values here at all. You know, I can't believe we're only only twelve minutes in. You've actually got a lot. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. Twelve oh, minutes where? in. But then I lost my vine charcoal. There it is. That'll slow uh, them down. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, it's it's this medium. Charcoal is fast. It is. Charcoal is a fast medium. That's it, why it, the cave paintings are made in charcoal, because they didn't have long. So they had to run <laughs> They didn't have something. time, so they said, hey, guys. Right. They were nomads. What, they knew they were leaving tomorrow. So. What, medium, what medium do we have at our disposal that's quick? And then Thork, or whatever his right. name he, was. He put he, his oil paints up he, and said, I'll yeah. save these he for said, when, we become hunter, <laughs> when we become uh, agrarian. <laughs> I know which medium we should use for these cave paintings. But some of the cave paintings were like, like different pigments and stuff. That's and dyes, true. They? And That's true. I'm kidding. Charcoal is the original. I like to consider this is anyway. This is how I sell charcoal to my students. That it is the original medium. It's the first drawing medium. I don't know if it is. You know, cave paintings do include um, dirt and blood as 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 pigment. But I'm going to go with the charcoal because you know, we don't use dirt and blood in the classroom. So I don't have to sell them on that. <laughs> Not anymore. Anyway, Not right? anymore. <laughs> right. We, our budget has been been increased. <laughs> uh, that's funny about the budget. Uh, what do you want us to do? Paint with blood and dirt? <laughs> I might bring that up next year. I'm sure that there's a lot of our teachers <laughs> that can relate to that, uh, those budgetary concerns there. Okay, I've got a great question here. And um, what kind of erasers are best for charcoal? Oh, needed eraser, no yeah. doubt. That's right. Um, the needed eraser. Now, I think in an earlier episode, 
I was trying to spell needed eraser, and I believe I spelled it correctly, but if you listen to the recording, don't go back and do that. It was months ago. It sounded like that I was saying like K, it, not N E E D, but K N E A D, but my vowels all ran together. So, but it, it is, it is spelled with a K and you need it. You do need it. Now I do you like to charcoal. use, a, um, I actually don't like white vinyl erasers myself for pencil drawing. I like pink pearl erasers or other pink rubbery erasers. But with charcoal, I do like a white vinyl eraser for really trying to remove the charcoal, maybe around the contours, in addition to the kneaded eraser to manage, uh, to manage my values. Okay, now we're going to start getting a little bit more precise here. Still keep this drawing fairly loose. This is going to be a looser drawing anyway, but I'm switching over to uh, the charcoal, the white charcoal now with the white charcoal pencil. And I'm just going to quickly start putting in some of these lighter tones and values. And I'm going to focus mainly here at the beginning on the areas where I see the lightest value. And then we're going to go back, if you're thinking ahead like I am, uh, we're going to go back to using some compressed charcoal to make some of the values nice and dark. Uh, so that'll push the value range even further. So just as we started out with the gray paper, um, we've kind of started with middle values. I mean, they look pretty dark right now, but as we start getting some of that compressed charcoal on the surface, you'll see that they're not quite as dark as you thought they were. And um, I am also not going to be tying myself too tightly to the reference, of course. Um, I want the proportions to look fairly accurate, of course, and I want it to look like a skull, but I don't need to get too carried away with making this exactly the same as the reference. That'll make it lose some life maybe if I get too tied up mm -hmm. to making it perfect. Though I do want a little bit more. Dark All right, just to review, here. because it's come up in the chat again, um, what what is white charcoal made of? And we started out talking a little bit about that, and we concluded that not only do we not know, um, but Brent Does Art told us that Generals, which is an excellent company, doesn't tell anybody what they make their white charcoal out of. We all feel pretty, pretty secure in saying that it is, in fact, not charcoal, but it's also not pastel. It's more compressed and uh, more compressed. It's closer to maybe a new pastel than a than a traditional soft pastel. But yeah, definitely, it's definitely more compressed than a traditional pastel pencil. This is not as powdery. It's very. Its consistency is very similar to the compressed charcoal. I would say it has some kind of, some kind of additive to it, maybe, maybe a clay or something. Maybe so. So even, even though I am adding the white charcoal right now, I'm still making adjustments to the drawing. It's almost like I'm drawing it again. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and that is not unusual when you're working with any medium that requires more than one pass, which is just about everything. One Southpaw too says the white looks great. It really, it really starts to emerge from the surface of the paper when you when you introduce the white charcoal. And there's a reason for that. Um, and the reason is you're broadening the range of value, mm -hmm. and uh, you're creating additional contrast. And that's just an example of why value is so important. Lorraine Burks asks chalk? Question mark. Probably, but more expensive. <laughs> yeah, I'm, <laughs> That's I'm, why they won't tell us, Lorraine, because it's just chalk, and you can get a box much cheaper at the uh, well, it is, off the supply store. You know, it is interesting. It's not chalk, though, because, you know, chalk makes a, a weird noise when you rub it over the surface, you mm -hmm. know. Um, it definitely feels like charcoal, and behaves like charcoal, mm -hmm. but it can't be charcoal. So I don't know. 
we don't need to overthink it too much. You just, know? We just <laughs> need to use. We just need to learn to use it, and uh, we'll call it what we will. I don't know what's in half the mm-hmm. stuff I eat. You know, so uh, <laughs> I'm working on that. I'm starting to read the packages. Now, I'm using a paper towel to keep my hand out of the way, even though there's lots of smearing and crazy stuff happening back there. Um, And I would recommend doing the same there if you are drawing like I am on a flat surface. Isabel has had a couple of comments. Her most recent, um, my first and only competition was white and black charcoal, and I won third place, a pick of my daughter with her daughter. Well, you should do more black and white charcoal work then. It sounds like you've got uh, an inclination um, towards towards the medium. That sounds great. And you Still also mentioned, and I read your comment a few minutes ago, it says, trying to focus on drawing with pencil, basics, watercolors, and all this stuff in uh, Virtual Instructor. I'm trying not to spend too much as I've managed to accumulate more things, mediums, than I'm using. Well, welcome to the club. Um, I'm the same. I am the same way. I've got media media at home that I'll really never get through. Uh, so I kind of consider myself a collector, not only an artist, but a collector of art media. And I think it's fun. It can get it can get a little pricey. Yeah, it can get out of control, um, especially if you if you're like a you like to watch YouTube videos and stuff like that or virtual instructor. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, because then you see something, you're like, oh, that's cool. I want to do that. Yeah, and you, you order it, it, and then it comes, and then it sits there um, and looks at you from across the room until you finally, finally pick it up and try it out. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to, to combine a variety of different textures here. So I am... Uh, blending some of the applications and some of the applications I'm allowing to just sit on the surface and also uh, add a little bit of, you know, a little squiggly line here and there mm-hmm. uh, to try to mimic the texture that I'm seeing. And I'm not concentrating, like right now I'm drawing teeth, but I'm not thinking, hey, I'm drawing teeth right here. I'm just concentrating on the shapes of different values. And these teeth uh, are pretty pretty bad shape uh, on this person. (laughs) So that's going to give me a little bit of freedom to uh, be a little bit looser with my interpretation on the drawing here as well. So, but the light source is clearly coming from the left side. And that means that we're going to see more and more shadows as we work our way to the the right side here. Um, So you can see the lights hitting the left side of these teeth. And then the the right side of the teeth, they're, they're a little bit darker. And then as we work over here, they almost are all completely in the darkness. I like that. When details disappear in the shadows, it makes it look realistic because that's how, you know, that's how we really see. We don't pick up all the details all of the time. And you can draw them when you don't see them. You can, force, you can force the details into your artwork, and that's okay. Michelangelo did that. But um, if, if you're like me and you like, you like those dark shadows, it's actually a little bit less to draw, and it looks more realistic. All right, we'll give this a quick little blend, and then we'll go back over the top of it uh, with additional application here to bring in a little bit more of the texture. Sniper Wiper says he just spent, we're talking about collecting art supplies now and the cost, spent 28 pounds on one tube of oil paint. Hmm, what color would that be? Probably that dioxazine purple. I bet it was a red. A red? You're going to have to tell us. Let's see. I'll try to keep my eyes open. Chat's moving pretty quick. Oh, I got a question here that, oh, well, well, this is Brent Does Art again. I probably shouldn't have started reading it because I don't know that I have an answer. One of my <laughs> students' parents just asked me what markers are best for manga and anime. Do you guys have a suggestion? The student is on somewhat of a budget. Hmm. I don't draw with markers, but a ton of my students do. And um, I think that, that a lot of them were really into the Copic markers a couple of years ago. And now I know there's another brand of an alcohol-based marker that blends well, but I just can't remember the name of it right now. But I, I use Prismacolor markers okay, at, just because I'm a big old Prismacolor fanboy. <laughs> um, and that is somewhat sarcastic. But I think that the Copics are probably the best ones on the market. Uh, because of their brush tip and mm-hmm. because of the quality of the marker. But there are a lot of brands out there that have surfaced 
Um, that may be a little more more friendly to the pocket, possibly. Yeah, I don't know if the quality is going to be that great, mm-hmm. but um, you know, there's there are a ton of brands that have popped up because I don't think markers are very inex- they're not very expensive to produce, um, and because of that, I think that there's a lot of like people and companies who can outsource that and kind of white label markers. And that's why you're seeing it. Maybe you've noticed this. I'm kind of getting off on a tangent here, but maybe <laughs> you've noticed that there has been a huge influx of new art materials out there on the market. Um, and uh, you see a lot of them on Amazon and so on. And that's because it's it's become very easy for really anybody who wants to, to create their own products using white labeling uh, through places like Alibaba and and other places that connect you with uh, places in China and overseas that will will create those products and then you you white label them meaning you put your brand name on them and then you can sell them. I got a question that has to do with what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, Michelle tells us that Blick Studio pens are like Copic but are a lot less in price. Do you think that uh, is that what Dick Blick has done? I have no idea what Dick Blick is doing. Okay. Um, well, that may be a helpful comment for a lot of us. Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what Dick, Dick Blick is a reputable company, they are. but there are a lot of. That's not necessarily saying that it's bad to mm. use markers from China. No, don't get me wrong, um, because there are a lot of companies that are reputable com- companies that do outsource the production of their products, and a lot of times those are countries like China that are making those products. And um, sometimes the the quality is up there. It's still just as good as what you would expect by, from name brand companies. But uh, but that's why you're seeing probably a lot of new art products out there. Um, and I, the reason why I say that about the markers is because I think I have seen several new brands of markers out there suggested to me on Amazon every time I go go on there. And I a lot of them I know are just white labeled products because they're they look the same as other brands of markers. They're the same shaped, yeah, um, like uh, packaged or, or the tubes that they come in. Right. Every, everything seems similar except for the logo and the packaging mm. might be slightly different. But uh, well, those uh, those type of markers anyway, Copic and otherwise, um, they are capable of producing some pretty nice results. I've been really impressed with some of my own students' artwork. I just haven't I haven't ordered them. Um, because I told you our our budget only covers uh, blood and dirt. No, I'm just kidding. They are expensive, and I'm worried about the caps being left off. I throw away a lot of pins as it is. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and get this little sinus cavity here. Oh, yeah. And uh, use a little bit of the compressed charcoal there in the pencil. So i got an update yeah, on the white charcoal substance, the substance that formerly known as white charcoal. Now we're going to call it <laughs> calcium carbonate. It is calcium carbonate and um, is the main ingredient, main component of eggs, I'm told. Who told me that? Let me find, that was Pat, I believe. Thank you, Pat. So calcium carbonate is a common substance found in rocks as the minerals calcite. Is, is that definitely true or is it speculated that it's calcium carbonate? I, I believe anything Pat tells me. I always have. <laughs> Yeah, I don't trust many people, so I have to I have to choose someone. It's Pat. Right. <laughs> Thank you for that. All right. All right, while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and hit a couple spots that I know are going to be super dark with this uh, compressed charcoal. we got 17 more minutes. Uh, I think I'm going to be able to finish this one. I'm working with charcoal the entire season. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, it does does allow you lots of time to do something like this. You know, it's it's really hard for us to do this kind of stuff here. I know it, it might look like it's uh, easier than it is, but uh, it is difficult to, to go on live where you know that you've got a lot of people watching you. Oh yeah, and uh, create a piece of artwork in a time frame. And you, you know, we all know it's going to go through some awkward stages as it grows up. 
just like just like kids do. You know, a lot of times I don't like people to see my drawings while they're young because they really haven't developed into much yet. So you, you know, but this is great. We get to see those first few marks because sometimes that's where the breakdown is um, in learning to draw. Is, uh, is 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 how to place those first very broad marks like that gesture, that angled line that that Matt started with, and those first straight lines that he used to start the uh, start the cranium. Those are very important. All right, sticking with the compressed charcoal, going right underneath the teeth. This is where we have a strong shadow, and my shadow is a little bit flatter. I mean, this is part of this is the bottom of the teeth, but um, mine's a little bit flatter than what's happening in the drawing, and that's just because somewhere, somewhere there's a little bit of a, a discrepancy between mm -hmm. my drawing and the photo, and it's probably that I need to bring the bottom draw down a little bit, but um, instead of going and um, trying to make all kinds of changes and things at this point, I'm just going to kind of flatten that shadow. That's a good place to, to kind of hide a little bit of a, a mistake, if you want to call it a mistake. Um, Isabel has a question. Heard it's good to know the skull. However, Ashley says once he did not really think so. Did I say that? Yeah, you did say at one did. point that I, it's not that important yeah, to know the anatomy. I believe we, I, I think it's coming back to me. Now, having said that, um, I have a skull in my bedroom. I, it probably sounds weird, but it was, it's, uh, it's been, it's been, it's been in my family been, for years. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been close to my heart, I guess. Since I was in art school, it was one of the supplies I had to buy in art school and I've drawn it so much. It actually does sort of feel like a family member. Um, so in any case, you talk to it. I don't talk to it. Um, but Not it is, time, it is, though. it is like an arm's length away from where I sleep. So I don't know. I don't mean to say that uh, it's that special to me. Um, but I have a lot of experience drawing the skull and I appreciate it. And I may have, gr I may have grown from that. I don't know, but Ing, the, uh, the popular and famous French artist, and I believe I was probably referencing Ing. You because, were. Okay, you were talking because, about yeah. Ing. Ing doesn't believe, and, and I kind of fall into this camp more and more as I get older, that you really need to know what's going underneath the surface of a body. He felt like all you're really doing is capturing light in the form of value and color um, in an arrangement gradations and otherwise. And if you can get the value and color placed correctly, you're creating the illusion of a skull, the illusion of an elbow under flesh. And to know that it's an elbow under flesh is not really, um, doesn't really, the artist really doesn't need to understand that form underneath there, just how it, uh, just how the light hits it. And of course, it's going to be different. You know, every time you draw a skull, every time you draw an elbow, is going to be a new experience. So why memorize the bone underneath when the light lighting is going to change every time? It's just a theory. It's just an idea. Yeah, yeah. I tend to agree with that too. Mm -hmm. um, considering that I don't know what an occipital lobe is, really. <laughs> yeah, just making up stuff. He has no idea what he's drawing right now. I, what, but it's coming giraffe? out. It's, this is a draft. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's coming out uh, just um, like a draft. <laughs> No, but I I really used to know all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I remember it was it was kind of big in school in college. Our our drawing professors would use uh, Latin terms. Well, I meant when I was in high school oh, okay. for you know taking biology classes. Mm -hmm. and my school was not focused on learning the anatomy when it came to figure drawing. I see. In fact, I you know, it took four years of figure drawing. Four years. Not four classes. <laughs> I was in figure drawing for four years. And, uh, you know, we never really went into the anatomy. Um, Your which, teacher would say things like this, this thingy. No. <laughs> yeah, well, kind of. <laughs> um, she would talk in terms and he would talk. I had two really good figure drawing teachers and uh, they kind of alternated. Um they would talk in terms of the elements of art. You know, they, were, they would talk about line and shape, and and they weren't really necessarily, they were saying, hey, how is that line? Do those proportions feel correct? You know, that kind yeah, of stuff. Sure. Now, it wasn't... The proper art terms. It, right. It wasn't, mm -hmm. now look at that uh, anterior whatever, blah, 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 blah. Does that... Is that in the right place? You know, um, and maybe that's because they knew that I didn't really know what they were going to talk about if... Hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, did. they were dumbing it down for yeah, you. Yeah, they were they're saying, yeah, are you see that shoulder? <laughs> see that funny bone right there? Watch out for the funny bone. That's your funny bone. Yeah, did I say uh, elbow earlier? I totally meant funny bone. <laughs> um but uh, it was never that way. Um, but mostly what we did in figure drawing classes w- was draw the figure. I mean, mm-hmm. it was like the whole, the whole class was drawing our model. And, uh, you know, we'd have critiques and things like that. But it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of, all right, guys, today we're going to talk about the structure of the skull, that kind of thing. No, nothing like that. Which... Maybe it should have been. I mean, I, I'm sure that there are some programs that teach that way. Because there are some teachers that have learned that way and are te- teach their students that way. I would say that my um, main drawing professor, he used the Latin words for all of the muscles. You know, we we could be commun- we could talk about because you're mostly drawing. You know, when in figure in figure drawing, you really don't see the bones. I mean, you're mostly drawing people's muscles, honestly. So we were pretty good about the the proper name of the muscles. But I'm not. I wouldn't say that um, they, that they used any sort of special vernacular for the bones. All right, let's see. How do you feel about drawing to the reference photo versus keeping your artistic style? And this is from L. Johnson. Well, uh, your artistic style is going to come out when you draw to the reference photo. It's going to come out anyway. It's going to come out um, unless you're trying to force a particular style. Unless or you something. are a photorealist, you know. Right. I guess and you're you're you're, you're yeah. really only judging your artwork against the exact match, square by square, so to speak. Yeah. If we all sat down and drew the skull um, in the same amount of time and and so on, it it would all look different. It, everybody's skull would be different. And mm-hmm. that's because we would all, you know, whether we knowingly did it or not, we'd all interpret interpret it differently based on the, the way we position shapes and, and and so on. So I guess you could you could be more stylized, purposefully stylized, um, and work farther away from the reference. I guess you could do that, like in a. Well, I think that some people, you know, some people obviously put too much emphasis on whether a drawing looks like a photo or not. We all know those people. <laughs> uh, no, there's anything <laughs> wrong with that. But we all know that that is a measure that some people use to to judge the quality of an artwork, which, you know, that's not a very good way to, to judge a piece of artwork, in my opinion. But there are people that go too far in the other direction, too, and say, oh, that is too literal. Mm-hmm. That is so... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, there are people that go too far the other direction and they s- stick their nose up of anything that is remotely it's, representational. It's too boring. It's too boring. Someone's it's already, too literal. Someone's already drawn a flower. It never needs to be done again kind of yeah. an attitude. And I hate that uh, just as much mm-hmm. uh, because that is just, that's uh, ignorance on a different level uh, mm-hmm. where, you know, you can appreciate all different interpretations of art, all different ways that people uh, create a piece. You know, some an abstract artist might look at the skull and create something that's just absolutely wonderful and beautiful but doesn't look anything like a skull. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And vice versa. Somebody could sit down and draw a beautifully rendered, almost exact copy of this skull, and there'd be right. beauty in that as well. Mm-hmm. I like those little details, those little pits of really, you know, just putting a couple of those in and a little, oh, yeah, a little cracks much. in the cheekbone. Yeah. It really so. go a long way in making all of your other marks that are sort of textured feel like, uh, feel like uh, intentional detail as well. Yeah, it doesn't take much to create kind of a, an illusion there. Mm-hmm. Right, Isabel says she really likes here. your skull's eyeball. Blue Jean 55 says, I like that popping cheekbone and uh, sketchy... Sketchy Gaz says, do you have a favorite muscle? Uh, mine is probably the sternocleidomastoid. Well, I got to tell you, that's my favorite one, too, because I like to say it. <laughs> my favorite muscle. The sternocleidomastoid. Fantastic. Uh, I wonder <laughs> if uh, Ashley knows my favorite muscle. My favorite muscle. I don't think I do. Is the fat muscle. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh and how can re- i forget i feel like i'm in high school again the reason <laughs> why i say that it's the fat muscle is because my name is matt fussell 
And if you switch the M and the F, it's fat muscle. And of course, all of my my friends had when you're growing up, high school, you, know, you have to call people silly names. Yeah, and my nickname was Fat Muscle. And in fact, I guarantee you, if I ran into any of my friends from high school, uh, who some followed me to college, uh, actually would they probably use call that. me Fat Muscle mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. In fact, they they would you know they would just call me Fat. You know, <laughs> just F A T T. They didn't want to give you the muscle. They were taking the credit away. So, all right, let's see. Judith says, What is the best way to sharpen a charcoal pencil or a calcium carbonate pencil? <laughs> uh, well, there are some manufacturers that make larger pencil sharpeners. And I can show you in just a minute, but I only have five minutes left on this drawing. So I want to try to get this finished, and then I will show you really quickly how you can sharpen your charcoal pencils. And uh, just adding some of the darks now, and again, broadening the range of value and the contrast in here. It's looking really good. You still got five minutes. I still got five minutes. So the timer says, but you know, I like to cheat with the timer. So maybe <laughs> I reset it. The reference is a suggestion. The timer is a suggestion. Everything, everything's just a big suggestion. <laughs> to me. So next week, Ashley will be doing the drawing. That's right. And uh, we've got 10 episodes planned for this season. So I know I, a lot of you guys love this and we have a lot of fun bringing it to you. So Next week, we'll continue. Um, if you want a reminder, make sure that you sign up for the newsletter list, uh, which is, there's a link in the description below this video. You'll also get three free course videos and eBooks when you sign up for that. All right, uh, enough of this with this stick. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, blend this in here real quick. Just working it into the tooth of the paper, the texture of the paper there, so it uh, is, the texture itself isn't uh, becoming a distraction there in the shadowed areas. We want these shadowed areas to kind of fade into the background here. Isabel says she likes charcoal, thinks it's neat, but it's too messy and hard to keep. That is a little bit of a, of a consideration. It, you, you do have to really take care in preserving your charcoal drawings, just like your pastel drawings, that is true. In fact, I've gotten to where I like my artwork to be really tough, um, and so I paint on wood nowadays instead of on stretched canvas, uh, just so I don't have any bad accidents. I've got I've had a few torn drawings and punctured canvases over the years, so I, I feel you there. Well, maybe somebody can comment on this. I, I, there is a paper out there called pastel matte paper, mm-hmm. and I have never used it with charcoal, but uh, with pastel, it holds the pastel material in place on the surface. I mean, oh. it cuts down the dust from the pastel, I would say at least 50%, maybe more than that. Wow. Now, that being said, the paper is expensive and pricey, and you do have to order it. It's unlikely you're going to find it in the art store uh, in your local art store, and um, I haven't used it on with charcoal, so there's a couple of ca- caveats there for you. But that might be something that you try out anyway. If you want to do charcoal, but the the messiness scares you, and I know somebody's gonna somebody's gonna tell me, "Don't you ever blow your blowing on the charcoal?" Blow it on. Do you no. know what that will do to you? <laughs> Yeah, I know. I know it's not good to do that. Now, Matt is working with this drawing flattish, nearly flat. And you can, you know, if you tip your artwork up or you work on a drawing board on an easel, um, then the, the dust falls down. And so you'll be less less likely to blow, blow it off anyway. Yes, that's true. I do like to work with uh, charcoal and pastel almost vertical. Doesn't always work is work is work that way, or it's not not really best for filming though. Sometimes, yeah. There's a lot of mediums that I work with on a flat surface here, just because it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. For your benefit, yeah. All right, so we need to add just a touch of lighter value right here. 
just a touch right here. Um, Sketchy Gas says, will this be going up as a rewatchable video so we can draw along? Literally just got a new sketchbook. It will. Yep. It should should be, you know, as soon as YouTube's done processing it, it should be, uh, should be ready for your consumption. Mm-hmm. Seems your good. reconsumption. And I got one minute and 12 seconds left. So we're going to use a little bit. Finishing touches. Here we go. I'm going to add a little bit of the light shining through here. Margaret asks, is it tricky to frame a charcoal sketch? It does need to be probably framed with a, with a matte liner to keep it back um, behind the glass and then with glass over top of it. And the matte will, will keep the, ideally, it'll keep the charcoal paper from, um, from touching the glass. And you should probably, uh, if you put it, put it behind glass, you don't really have to spray it with a, with a fixative. So that's what I would do. I would, I would mat and frame my charcoal drawings. I'm going to soften up that edge of the back of the head there so it looks like it goes off into the darkness. Mm -hmm. Soft edges. And, makes, the, uh, makes the lit portion feel sharper. We get a little indication of that light shining through. And a quick little loose painterly kind of blend here. Let that edge blend. Time's right up. Time's up. Suggested time is up. Suggested time. <laughs> Suggested time. Sugge but you keep drawing. We got all the time in the world. We really don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, right, because we got another show starting at 8 o'clock. Yeah, it's time for time for the live lesson there. Uh, we'll move that over a little bit so you can kind of see it a little bit better. And we'll hide this silly time's up. There we go. What is that all about? Mm -hmm. All right, so... Uh, Charcoal is a great medium to create a drawing in 45 minutes, as you can see. Now, I yeah. promised I would show you how to sharpen the pencil. Uh, so let's take a quick look at that. Um, this here is uh, where I like to keep my pencil shavings here. Um, there we go. And um, <laughs> as you can see, I've got quite a collection here going. That looks great. I would take a this, picture of that and make that my screensaver. This is as organized as my drawers and things over here. There are, there are literally pencil shavings everywhere in here. There's batteries. There's all kinds of stuff here. I just throw <laughs> stuff to the side. Anyway. Uh, you should never throw your shavings away and see how many you have <laughs> at the end of your life. This is, this is at least a year's worth. Yeah. At, at least a year's That's worth impressive. of stuff. Um, anyway, so uh, let's see. She asked about the uh, charcoal pencil, right, with a white charcoal pencil. Uh, I like to use a blade when I'm sharpening mm -hmm. this. So I have a blade here, and I'm just going to cut down from the wood, being careful that I'm cutting away from my body, and <laughs> all I'm doing is exposing... And you're not pushing with your right hand, are you? You're using your left I'm thumb. I'm using my left thumb to guide the blade That's so, what's I'm not, important. so I don't cut. It's not, he's not peeling carrots right now. So there's no mus muscular force coming from his dominant hand. Right. Just that one thumb so he can really control how slow he pushes through and doesn't break that lead. And I'm also trying not to, uh, to remove anything that is not... Um, that is not uh, the material. So I'm trying to remove only the wood. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't think I said that right. Um, then I'm gonna use a sanding pad here to get a nice sharp tip. So you can see I've already done that here. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just gonna rub it. And while I'm rubbing it on the sand pad, sanding pad, I'm rotating it around. So this is really old school, but this is how I like to do it. And it exposes way more of the material. You can get a much sharper tip doing this if you're patient. And it gives you more of yeah, kind of an great. organic mark too, which is really nice. So Brent does art said that you should pour epoxy over your pencil shavings there and make a palette out of it. Oh, that would be That's cool. not a bad idea, That's Brent. A really, In fact, a, a really table, cool like idea. a little like a like a nightstand or something like that for me to set my skull on made of <laughs> shavings. Yeah. I'm yeah, gonna do absolutely. that. Um all right. Let's uh go ahead and switch back out over here. All right, well thanks for sticking around for the last hour, if you did. Um we got to go. We got another uh, lesson coming up here over at the virtualinstructor.com. 
Remember, uh, if you enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends if uh, you think it's something that they will love. And uh, you can check out three of our course videos and eBooks in the description below this video. You can check out our membership program. Uh, you know, guys, I know a lot of you in watching this right now are already a part of the membership program. If you haven't checked it out, it is really, truly incredible. And I'm you know, clearly coming from me. You would expect to hear that, but I, I'm not kidding. Um, it, there is a, a huge amount of information there. There's even a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. All the materials you need to teach, you know, minus the art materials, are uh, available for you there. So it's just it's just really incredible. I encourage you to check it out. Um, Ashley, thanks for remaining in the chat box. Yeah, uh, I've had a great time, um, part, mostly because your comments and questions were fantastic, really kept the conversation going. So thanks, thank you for those. They were really great. And I'm going to make sure that I get your your light adjusted before we go to the live lessons. All right. You're, I'm in the dark. I'm, you're in the dark over there. It looks feel a little, like I'm in a corner. It looks dramatic. I'm being it, punished. It really looks good on. It looks good on one camera, but on the other camera, it looks kind of dark. Uh, oh, wow. I could. I'm sure. I'm sure you can do something to improve my looks, and I appreciate it. <laughs> Anything you can do. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, uh, maybe we'll see some of you guys uh, over at the virtual instructor where we're working with watercolor pencils. I'm clearly going to have to wash my hands between now and then. Just something I like to do anyway. So uh, with that, we'll see you guys later, hopefully next week. Good night, everybody.